Hello everyone, Matt, Paul Offshore Fishing here. Got a uh, news release, the South Atlantic uh, Fishery Management Council. They're the uh, people that come up with all the rulemaking and kind of uh, the regulations. They're not necessarily the regulating authority, but they do a lot of <coughs> recommendations and kind of dictate what the regulations are gonna be. From what I understand, someone can correct chime in correct me if I'm wrong but they had their big conference last week down in Georgia and that they meet about four times a year and uh, in different states along the southeast um, North Carolina south that they classify the Carolinas as north and south and Georgia and Florida <clears throat> they kind of went over a couple different things uh, I'm going to hit on three big things for um, my area so to speak but if you want to I'm going to put the um, address uh, you can copy and paste it out of the description below uh, for the news release and go from there um, what they're going to talk about here is uh, North Carolina they're going to change uh, or designate 30 artificial reef sites and uh, put them in the snapper grouper management plan which what that's going to do is they're going to put gear restrictions there and uh, on those targeted species and uh, they're going to limit on what can be taken from there too um, probably what will be on those are like uh, non stainless hooks and <coughs> and barbless uh, circle hooks is probably what what we're going to see there is where you're going to have to fish on those artificial reefs um, the other, the second item that I thought was uh, real big that they talk out, uh, talked about was the, uh, they had pr presentations on addressing the conserve of shark depredation. Um, since sharks are the top of the food chain in the ocean, and uh, at one point in time they were sought after as far as uh, fishing wise, and it's not so much uh, now, especially with Shark Week and talking about the endangered species of the shark, uh, and not very many people are, you know, targeting them, that they've actually become a nuisance down in like states like Florida, where you know you, you can hardly get anything up to the surface. It's almost like the, uh, it's my opinion of the Goliath grouper, and they are amazing fish, um, probably dinosaurs for as big as they get and old as they get, but. Daggone, if they're not a nuisance, if you're trying to uh, catch a fish to eat, so to speak, and bring home, put on the dinner table, because they're going to eat it, and they're going to find where the boats are, and you know, try to get what's on the hook and line. So, uh, with they talked a lot about that. Uh, the presentation acknowledged the channels, and then they talked about uh, fishing, um, what the impacts of shark depredation and fishing ac activities, and outline challenge, challenges in addressing the concerns. Uh, including data needed to quantify shark encounters by fishermen. So um, with that, you may see uh, more reporting whether or not you encountered a shark during your fishing excursion. <clears throat> Lastly, they talked about the change or upcoming uh, 2020 fishing season as far as the uh, snapper grouper fishery. Um, Red Snapper, they proposed of doing a three-day season this year. Woo! whoop de doo Notice my uh, exuberance there. Um, last year there was a five-day season, and from what I, I could tell, um, or from what I've researched, that in that five-day season they caught around almost 50,000 fish, and their goal or their limit on the quote or their quota that they had for last year was 29,000. So they exceeded it now they said of those fish um and 29,000 for the recreational side and that was seven and the 29 fish for last year was supposed to be 71 percent of the quota so they say the recreational guys um kind of uh took it to the fish granted um i'm gonna hit more about on that uh later on the um uh, with that though going back to the proposed three-day um, uh, season that they're going to have this year that's all contingent on a uh, 
rule that was proposed way back when this stuff was all started that if there's a three day or less season recommended that they won't open the season at all so there was an um, amendment or a, uh, an appeal made it in december so they're trying to get the rules changed so they can have a less than three day season for um red snapper which don't get me wrong i love love to eat red snapper uh, i think you'll get times where they're a bit of a nuisance because there'll be no one's catching them so there'll, there'll be a plethora of them on the reefs and wrecks but if you're going to have a, i'm to the point now if you're going to have a three day season what's the point uh it's pro and most likely they'll pick the windiest three day season that you could uh imagine so i'm like what's the point there um going back to the data collected last year on the fish i w told you i wanted to re-hit back on it one of the things that uh i kind of questioned on what was their process and on the data collection uh, i think don't get me wrong i think we do need to do some sort of management on uh, our fishery and a lot of what comes out it doesn't make sense to a lot of people but at the same time it's it's a step in the right direction. Uh, I think we have some knee-jerk movements here where um, we don't have good data and we base our decisions on poor data and we do something real quick when there may not be an issue at all with it. So um, I think that's what happened with speckled trout back in 2012 when they reduced the, they, they said where it was a, it was overfished. Um, as far as the spotted sea trout, speckled trout, back in 2012, it was coming out where everybody thought it was overfished. Um, some more studies were done, and come to find out that it was the the fish was never overfished. The problem you had in those time periods were some uh, real hard winters, so to speak, and you had some frost kills. And I think the biggest management on that is like they've done in the uh, previous years or uh, you know here recently is if you had a real bad fish kill due to temperature you just close the season and let them try to spawn a little bit uh, longer look fortunately this past winter and the winter before last uh, it's been very mild and we haven't had to have that sort of closure so going back to um, the red snapper i think uh, management as far as getting the right data and having the right process I think, um, and I'm giving the biologists some benefit of the doubt because I don't think they have a good handle on how to collect the data. However, I think minimizing the days is a step, you know, it is a step in the right direction. I'm just seriously three. I mean, I, I was kind of, you know, figuring five. I think it, be honest with you, it really needs to be like um, North Carolina's just done with the flounder. It needs to be like a month long because there's a lot of, um, recreational fishermen that you know just can't get out but at the same time you may have people reporting that they caught red snapper and it may have been a red grouper you know some of it might be misidentification on the fish too so you know little education goes a long way obviously but uh anyways that's my spiel for today i hope everyone has a good one and look forward to seeing you on the water have a good one thank you Bye.